Hey everybody, we're back to play another 25 minute game. So, I've been a little bit annoyed at the <clears throat> 15 minute time control lately because I feel like, although it gives me a lot of time to think, I have to decide when to use that time. Um, what I mean is, certain times I'm allowed to think, but then if I think too much, I still run out of time. So, with this 25 minute time control, I'm hoping that... Hmm, what am I doing? <clears throat> French. I have <clears throat> enough time to think at every moment in the game. So that's what I'm hoping for. Still gonna play the first few moves pretty fast, as long as it's things that I know. Okay, so we're getting an exchange French. Sorry if I make weird noises this time, because I'm still a little sick. <coughs> Case in point. Okay. So, I learned with the <coughs> exchange French that I was doing, I was playing it basically wrong. I kept losing my games and I tried to figure out why, so I did a little bit of research and the setup I was putting myself in was basically um, <clears throat> developing this bishop somewhere, then uh, knight e7, pushing f6, and developing this bishop, I usually to uh, f5, then knight b d7, and uh, c6. And from here, <clears throat> this knight never had anywhere good to go. So, instead, I think that system, I had a misconception about this um, pawn c6 move. I think the knight belongs on c6. Um, it was a little counterintuitive to me because I always wanted to use this pawn to protect the d-pawn, but this time I'm going to try to not do that. And play other, play elsewhere, pretty much. So I still don't know the actual theory, so let's look at the candidates. So I could play <clears throat> knight c6 directly, um, after which he could play bishop b5. Um, I could play <clears throat> knight f6, just further protect this pawn. I see no downsides to playing that way, except maybe bishop g5. But one thing I learned is that if they play, what is it? Yeah, I think if they play bishop e3, then it's a good time usually for me to go pawn c5. <clears throat> and the same is true as if I go to d6, it's usually a good time for them to go c4. But now that the knight's here and it's blocking, it would be nice to do this <clears throat> as a developing move. But I would hang this pawn. And I don't have before check, because you could just take with the knight. Before check would be a discovery of the queen um, onto the knight. So I'm just going to... Hmm. But my whole point is... Yeah, I see no problems playing this way. I'm just going to do it. It's a little different than my system anyways, but I was already wanting to deviate, so let's go ahead and deviate. This is the benefit of the 25 minute game, right? Is that you can afford to spend time on moves like this. So they're developing their whole queen side first, trying to take advantage of this pin. <clears throat> but why can't I just go e7 castle rookie one? Are they planning to castle queen side? If so, how to develop the queen? <clears throat> Maybe as a battery. I could start with h6 so that there can't be a queen bishop battery. But then they take and then I take and then they win the pawn right. 
So maybe something modest is yeah. <clears throat> it's the French, right? We're not going for an aggressive opening. So this way when I take with the bishop, my queen's still protecting the pawn. It is nice natural development as far as I can tell. <clears throat> yeah, as expected. So what happens if I go knight here? Knight takes, knight takes, knight takes, pawn takes, bishop takes, queen takes. And it's a, that's a pretty interesting position, I think. What if knight here, knight takes, queen takes, Bishop takes, king takes. I don't think I have anything to fear. I'm up a piece for a pawn. <clears throat> this looks like a forcing way to challenge white for space. Anything else I should be concerned with besides the knight capture? I don't think so because the queen would have to move. Another good thing about this move is it's forcing, so it means that there's less things for me to calculate. So just to make sure, knight e4, knight takes e4, pawn takes e4, bishop takes e7, queen takes e7, check, no no check because the pawn's here. And I've always got c6 if the bishop comes out for check. Yeah, let's go for it. <clears throat> I didn't see that one. I just saw it right now. But what if uh, queen takes? I think queen takes is good because on knight takes, I have, if knight takes d5, I have knight takes d2, check. Winning the queen for a knight. So where's the <clears throat> queen going? We'll see. I should have calculated this though. I didn't think about that in between move. <coughs> <coughs> it appears to be at least decent for me, so. <clears throat> I suppose I should be happy. It's relatively equal position. I have an aggressive knight. And I've got the tempo, so likely I'll be ahead in development when all is said and done. And anywhere the queen moves, actually, if I get a chance to take this knight, I've got a discovery. And I would also force a recapture with the b-pawn. Yeah, so we've got that move. I could still force a recapture at the b-pawn, but then I would lose castling rights. But now they threaten d5. So there's a lot to keep in mind at this point. I could stay solid with 
C6. <coughs> Potential variation C6, F3. <coughs> Knight takes, queen takes, king takes, pawn takes. <clears throat> then how's my king getting? I could play rook e1, e8, and then king f8, and be relatively safe, I think. The dark squared bishop's gone, so I could afford to play g6 <clears throat> if his bishop comes here and tries to threaten the h-pawn. It looks okay. Is there anything better? I could play that without c6 inserted. With just knights for starters. That's a little more flexible, right? Knight takes, queen takes, king, king takes, pawn takes. It's a little more flexible, so it seems like it should be a little better. <clears throat> what about c6? Well, c6 allows me to castle now. <clears throat> Castling seems um, desirable here. Is there anything aggressive they can do? I mean, there's nowhere great for the bishop. I guess they could go bishop d3, right? Bishop d3. Castles, knight takes, pawn takes, bishop takes. Rook e8, and then we've got f3 coming, which maintains the bishop. So I don't think I can afford to play <clears throat> that way. <clears throat> there could be a bishop d3 and bishop f5. Trying to hold on, but at any time they can play f... f6 coming and my bishop's undefended, so I think it's all a no-go. So I think we have to go for this variation. They could play pawn takes. But just going for this one right off the bat. Okay, so here, does anything make sense besides rook e8? If I don't play rook e8, I fear for my king's safety. <clears throat> it's an interesting position. <clears throat> so how do I plan to develop my pieces? I think this bishop belongs here on f5, attacking this weak pawn. But the knight, how's the knight coming in? I guess I want my knight on b5, if possible, because on b5 I'm attacking this weak point on c3. That's hard to defend. Well, it's not hard to defend, is it? What's another spot? Another good spot would be e4, if potentially, although it can be kicked from there pretty easily. Therefore, it would be great to get my knight here to d6, where it would be able to jump to either of those squares. But how to get there? It's a long trip. I'm going to think on their time. <clears throat> E8's a safe move. It's still flexible.
I'm gonna put the bishop out first because I know where it wants to go. So I feel like I have a slight advantage because <clears throat> because I don't have double pawns, but it'll be pretty hard to take advantage of. So at this point, with that move, I think they want to move to e5. Or to h4 to try to kick my bishop away. So I want to go h6 to stay on this that long diagonal forever. I see no problem with that. I figured they might do as much. Here I could go g4, <clears throat> threaten to double pawns again, but I'm not sure how good that would be giving them the open g file. And there's pawns on both sides of the board, so the bishop might be preferable in the end game. Decisions, decisions, huh? <clears throat> My gut says to exchange bishops. I don't think any amount of calculation is going to help me make this decision. And that square for the knight, e5, is not really a... Well, <clears throat> I suppose they could go there and then go to g6. That might be annoying. So another option for me is... Start with knight, bishop takes. I'll see which way they want to recapture. <clears throat> okay. I think next I want... F3 and King... F6 and King F7. <clears throat> to restrict this knight. <clears throat> if ever rook e1, check, just king f7. Yeah, so on this, I want this. <clears throat> Clearly I need to develop my knight though. I wonder about 
G6 here. King G6, that is. King g6, g4, totally fine. King g6, rook f3, <clears throat> develop the knight. Seems fine. Looks like a weird move, but I think it's okay. I think I'm going to want <clears throat> knight c6 because I want control of e7. I don't want any rooks getting in that square. <clears throat> the nice thing about g4 for me is that it blocks up this file so his rooks can't use it. And now I'm kind of wonder about E2 right now. So what if G5? Do I take with the F or the H pawn? Well, if F, if G5. Then I take the knight. I think it should work out for me. I think I really need to play this move because I'm now seeing on <clears throat> rook e2, he's got rook e3 and I don't really like that so the plans to go here somehow double up maybe now e2 then e th rook e3 can be met with oh I was going for that way It's still fine though, because h5 is met with king f7. Oh, king f7, g5, <clears throat> pawn takes, rook f3, king g8. And I'm okay. So I don't care. So what's all that with e6, rook e6 included? Rook e6, h5, king here, h6. I don't even have to take, but I probably, well, I should. How about with tempo? What about pawn f4? Does that change anything? <clears throat> I 
<clears throat> this would be with tempo, right? Rookie four, because I'm attacking this pawn. He could put his king behind me, but then I could voluntarily retreat. Yeah, I like I like that. And if <clears throat> bishop g3 attacking the rook, then I can just go back to e3. Worth a shot. It's getting pretty crazy. What's this user name? The Nikki. The Nick is cooking. Then I K is cooking. Then I kiss cooking. I'm gonna bet on the Nick is cooking. Let's see their stats: thirteen thirty-five in blitz, but seventeen thirty-one in classical. So they're going for the. Forcing continuation. So I don't want to be lined up. <clears throat> I don't want to be trapped. I want my king to stay active. And it's important for the king to guard e7, I think. So this seems like the best move to me. I don't know why they accept my games if they don't want to be thinking at all on their own time. That's an interesting one. Protect the pawn that way. They're also attacking my pawn. This seems like an interesting idea. <clears throat> I don't really want to give up that pawn. But I see three ways to, to attack it. Rook d8, knight e7. And king e6. I don't like king e6 because I want to somehow have this file open for my other rook to come to. Notably, if they take this pawn, I can take the G pawn, which might help me in some cases. Now I'm wishing I'd put my knight on D7 so I could have protected this pawn with my pawn. And if I defend with E7 and then go C6, well then this knight has nowhere good to go. Maybe it's worth a rerouting. Um, e7, c8, d6. That might be good in the long term. So what about e7? <clears throat> c4. <clears throat> I probably would have to take it at that point. Then they take with the knight. <clears throat> Yeah, that's looking fine. I'm not trapping my rook, am I? I don't think so. I always have an escape route right down here. It is getting awkward, though, for the boths of us. I'm just saying now that c4 is a bad idea for him if he takes takes with the knight and I take g g4. Somehow I believe in my position though. <clears throat> I figured that was coming. Is there anything to be said? No. About Rook f4, no.
because then knight g2 wins it, so I'm finally not going to spend much time on a move. And just play this one. Probably my plan now is rook e8, c6, knight c8, knight d6, aimed at that knight c4 square. I wish there was a more forcing way to play, though. But I don't think so. So let's just keep going with our plan. Rook b1 doesn't change anything except for it inserts b6 into the mix, which would weaken c6, but <clears throat> that's a risk I'm willing to take. Once I can finally move this knight, <clears throat> I'm really liking my pressure on the e-file. I think there's more targets in their position than mine. And now that the king is here, yeah, getting my knight <clears throat> to d6 is going to be nice. Okay. How about c5 in this position? No. <clears throat> so, pretty simply, their plan is b5. A5. But I think I see a trick if they play it. So let's say c6, a5, knight c8, that holds b5. <clears throat> Mm, doesn't quite work. Still, I think I... Let's see. c6, <clears throat> a5, knight c8. Pawn takes. What about knight takes? Yeah, knight takes. Because then the knight still <clears throat> can move in here. And if I get this check in and they take, and I take with a pawn, they lose the rook because I have two attackers on e3 and my pawn's attacking. Yeah, I'm going to do this. Hopefully they don't see that. If not a5, then what? Alright, I don't understand. <clears throat> I'm just going to continue my plan. <clears throat> so what? a5, knight d6. Thank <laughs> you. 
<clears throat> let's see, knight d6, a takes b, knight check, wins material, I think. Because if the king moves, then I just get the knight. <clears throat> but is this pawn going to become too strong? So takes, takes, check, move. I still like it. I have a decision to make if they take. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure he didn't calculate all this. He or she. And that's the benefit. Okay. So I want to play A takes. Well, I really want to play knight check. <clears throat> I'm going to play the knight check. I can always stop this <clears throat> pawn from promoting at the very least. I have a hard time believing it's going to make it. Okay, it's going to get tricky after check. So in between move, now here, if I want to win the rook, Interesting to see what they choose to do. Let's say they play B seven. I feel like I might be busted if they play b7. No, b7, I get checkmate. No. <clears throat> b7, e2 check. How does this work? Yeah, how about... D takes... <clears throat> And if they move with a8, then e7, e2, I f 
think I'm okay. Let's look. Pawn takes <clears throat> a8, e2, king, <clears throat> c1, pawn d2, check, and then I'm promoting as well. <clears throat> if, if anything else, then rook b8, and I'm holding. And if king d3, oh yeah, there's this one. Mm. Didn't realize that works. That's too bad. <clears throat> mm. So what, now I'm just down two pawns? It's unfortunate. <clears throat> I guess one pawn. It's going to be interesting. I didn't even have that checkmate because my brook was pinned. <clears throat> oh, didn't even see that. All right, this is resignable. That's annoying. Oh well, they played good. Now let's go to the analysis board. And let's not analyze. All right, so what did I do wrong? <clears throat> Maybe even right here. Maybe I should have developed before. Would have been better, maybe. Just so I can get my knight out and I could try the knight e7 setup. I don't think this was a mistake yet though. I thought all this was fine. It's just an end game. I think my problem was <clears throat> I don't mind if the knight comes here, I can always move it back later. If I'm going to make a pawn move, maybe it makes more sense. Well, f6, but the bishop might um, get on this diagonal somehow and harm the king. So maybe the best move here was knight d7. It's just too many pawn moves. And I didn't even have to react. I could have moved the knight here too. That would have been better too. I think. Still, I... And this square ended up not being the right one for the knight. Definitely would have played d7 in retrospect. The thing is, my idea to get my knight here, I should have known at this point that the rook is on guarding. The king can come up and guard this pawn, so it doesn't actually... I had this idea in my head, and I think it kept me from... I was too fixated on it. It didn't end up happening, so... d7 would have been better. Besides that, I like this move. 
that was kind of a forced move, really. All this I thought was fine. And this almost works. Just barely doesn't work. So if this doesn't work, I think I'm already busted. It's probably better to try. Not There's really not much to try here because the, the rook's going to come out. So I suppose here... <clears throat> Best is probably king of seven. I totally blanked on this idea. Let's see. Let's give it a full on analysis. So, I'm happy with the time, uh, the time control. I think I had plenty of time to think about my options. I just didn't make the right options. <laughs> That's what happens, right? That's part of playing and improving is not doing the best job all of the time. Looks like I missed some miss chance somewhere. But we'll see. So yep, um, three mistakes, three blunders for me. 70. Average honey pond loss, zero inaccuracies. They had one inaccuracy, four mistakes, one blunder for 45 average honey pond loss. So let's check it out. All this is fine. They're saying this is bad. Why is that? I thought this looked fine. I guess it is fine. And this is what happened in the game, right? What? Check. Oh. Wow. this. Oh, with check. Okay. Fine, fine. <laughs> this is super funny. So I'm just down a pawn here. That's crazy. Didn't realize that when they took this, they would be attacking my queen with their knight, so they'd be able to prevent the check. Yeah. Computer calls it dead even, pretty much. Yeah. What about this? Yeah, that's fine. I was liking this. I guess. Hmm. Oops. I don't know what's going on anymore. Probably rerouting the knight to try to pick up this pawn. Yeah, it's looking like a dead on draw. A 
This felt like a mistake. Yeah. It was a mistake. This is better. But I wanted to go back here. It seems totally fine. If I take... They get this whole train going. Ugh. I don't like that. That's just tricky. Hmm. Okay. Yeah, the problem is with this knight here, I always have to protect this pawn in an awkward way. What happened? Yeah, that was a bad move. So they're saying protect with the rook. Why is that? So I can go over here. I guess they have no way of kicking this knight out. And I've got more space, and I'm ready for b5. I never would have found this move. I see the point though. Got an outside pawn. <clears throat> hmm. Yep, this is all right. This is all right. This is all right. Oh. Yeah, what about this? I go back. I got a move order wrong. I knew I had something here. And if he takes, check. Really? Oh, check. Back. Let's see, he goes for this. Oh, I'm threatening mate. I'm threatening mate. So, what about this? Then I take with check. Okay, that's tricky. So, here. Yeah, man. Okay, so if I take with the rook, and he ignores, he goes forward with his check, then I move back, and we're good to go. If he takes, then I get knight check, and he either gets forced back here, in which case the knight's protecting for mate, and I get a mate, or he moves here, and I get knight check, and I got time to take this pawn. So I had my chance. It's tricky, though. I'm still good here, somehow. 
How is this any different? Because I get one extra move. route yeah man oh man I had another chance I only saw it too late is all I, know, I saw two move order mistakes. Cost me the game. Well, tricky tactics. And I had plenty of time to think about it, so it's just one of those times where this is what this is how you learn tactics, right? Getting it wrong. So cool. I'll see you guys next time.